The Pro Z790 A Max is the second iteration of the Pro Z790 A released a couple years ago, and they are nearly identical at all points, but their pricing. The new Max Wi Fi comes with a significantly cheaper price tag and still shows off a couple of uh, uh, renewed, refreshed features, which is pretty awesome. Now, today we are reviewing the excellent Pro Z790 A Max Wi Fi from MSI, a good for all purpose motherboard which tries to deliver intense performances while preserving your wallet. Fun fact for you, joining my channel does not only keep me sponsor free, but it only gives you a lot of sexy, permanent signs of sexy. Um, it, it won't fix uh, your issue of micro penises. I've tried, it, it doesn't work. So the Pro Series is MSI entry level, right? They're, they're the cheapest kind of good for all uh, motherboard. And I'm not a big fan of it because it usually lack uh, um, the power, the VRM power to really develop, you know, what the Z790 chipset can do or what the 14th or 13th generation of Intel Core, of Intel Core processor can deploy in terms of computing. But the Pro A in that aspect is different. This thing brings you to another level of computing all around and can more easily compete against uh, more premium, more expensive motherboards such as the Prime Z790A or even Gigabyte's gorgeous Z790 Aorus Elite, both of which I have reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so yet. Now, starting with the obvious. Well, the Pro Max ticks all the right boxes. We got that six PCB layers ATX board for a long lasting PCIe signal resistant product. Design wise, we have a plastic free aesthetic showing off a perfect aluminum cut and brush control, a very mineral gray theme, which should be pleased both classic and white theme builders and no more tacky integrated LED. Instead, we got our Mystic compliant connectors for a full and individualized RGB control. Simple, industrial and focused. Now, more technically, our board is still powered by our LGA1700 CPU socket, which did introduce both DDR5 and PCIe 5.0 standard across three long-lasting generations of core processors. And chipset-wise, we have our low-heat signature Z790 PCH, which does bring in all the usual lower-grade PCIe lanes. VRM-wise, this thing comes with 18 ADM power stages organized in a 16 plus 1 plus 1 power solution. That is 1,440 amps worth of juice, 1,200 of which is CPU-centric. And here, I want to take a second to explain uh, why that is such a, a big deal. Pros usually come with 55 amps power stages, which can easily be pushed at 100% usage by any of the compatible i7 and i9 Intel processors. And that translates in a very hot power solution, as I've shown on my last week review. So very good looking, but very disappointing Z790 Project Zero that you should be checking as well. Here we have 80 amps power stages, gonna be uh, more difficult to push them at 100% usage, so they're gonna produce less heat all in general. In addition, the Pro A Max comes with two massive heat blocks. The main one showing off an impressively large heat plate for some extended heat dissipation, and our side block is dense, heavy, and spreads several protubating wings for some additional rigidity area. Both of them do features in our very standard direct contact design, offering a direct heat relief to both chokes and power stages alike. Now, after an hour-long torturous stress test and with about the most heat-intensive processor on the market today, our heat blocks don't react the same. Both blocks stock most of the thermals in the first 15 minutes and plateau around the 35th minute. The side block shows a surface temperature 10 degrees Celsius higher than the main block, which will make sense seeing the volume differences. But we still remain largely below the 75 degrees Celsius limit where I start to nag. It is definitely on the hotter spectrum of things, but nothing concerning. Now, these results were achieved with a, the stock clock of an i9 14,900K. If you're gonna go toy around and overclock it, you will go beyond and will cross some threatening temps limits, which makes me say that despite having a very, you know, overclocking worthy VRM, well, the 
the heating blocks, the cooling blocks, sorry, are simply not good enough in, in higher grade overclocking configuration. If we had had, um, say, a copper pipe linking both of the blocks to try to give a more homogeneous heat spread, things would have been different, but that's another discussion altogether. So despite some limitation, I still see this VRM as a major improvement when compared to its other cheaper pro siblings. And I can see this uh, uh, motherboard toying with K-class processors, i7 and i9 alike. Now, memory wise, again, some nice stuff here. We have an upgraded dual channel, which can now support 64 gigabyte sticks, meaning that the pro a Max can now support up to 256 gigabyte worth of DDR5 RAM in total with a single stick maximum clock of 7.8 gigahertz. And since this 7.8 gigahertz clock can only be achieved on single sticks, having more gigabytes in them means more RAM at a higher clock which is pretty sweet. Staying in the memory, while well, our AMAX keeps the four PCIe 4.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive connectors we had seen on the other Pro Series, no PCIe bifurcation, so you can use all of them in the same time, great for RAID configurations, and despite not having any flow thermal padding, they have no problem to stay cool thanks to some heavy individual thermal padded heat shields, except this one, which was sacrificed on, you know, the hostel of spec boosting. Because not only is the PCI 4.0 standard very hot in general, but it is stuck under a very heat producing, heat bleeding component, your graphic card. Uh, so no operating system on this stick and no games, please. Just put some casual storage files that you really don't want to use. Finally, I would be amiss not to mention our aging six SATA ports for any of your legacy drives. Here they are. Now, export-wise, we have four PCI slots, three 16 slots, and one lucky, hairy, and single bachelor. Only the closest one to your CPU got the full 16 lanes treatment and in addition can operate to the future proofing PCI 5.0 standard. Therefore, this is where you'd want your GPU placed for optimal performances, hence this honest metal reinforcement. The two other 16 slots are, well, much less fast and I do regret seeing that many. It kind of tried to fool you into thinking you got more, but apart from this one, they really can do much. Especially the bachelor one, which will always get stuck under a GPU and really will serve no purpose at all. I also think that MSI could have done a great quality statement here by adding a GPU ejecting mechanism. But instead we have an enlarged button, which I find to be well, not, not useless, but definitely on the cheap side. Overall, a very predictable export solution. Um, it does waste a little bit of our money on completely useless slots, but it does still protect your gaming quality for many years to come thanks to the PCI 5.0 standard. So that's... That's the most important. Now, back IOIs. Well, we got our integrated plate, so no obvious disgrace here. And starting from the left, we have our flash BIOS button for CPU less BIOS update, a must for all modern motherboards, two legacy plugs, our display outputs, a couple of 5 gigabit plugs, four high bandwidth plugs, including a 20 gigabit dual channel right here, our 2.5 gigabit LAN plug, but most importantly, we have an updated Wi-Fi 7, which not only provides a much lower latency, but also doubled our data swap. So that's pretty awesome. And finally, and noticeably, we have a rather premium all digital ALC4080 Realtek codec cleansed by a solid 520 mini farads worth of capacitors. I'm actually happy about this. This is a good enough solution for a rich playback gaming experience. It's also not that bad in a recording setup. So yeah, pretty nice. Overall, it is actually quite good. When you look at the other Pro Series, which are only showing like four USB, you know, a, a second generation, a couple of blues, a couple of reds, this has more oomph, more bandwidth ability. Uh, we have a, a very nice Wi-Fi 7 coupled with a 5.4 Bluetooth adapter, and the audio codec is actually pretty premium. 
it's one of the very best on the market. So yeah, big kudos for the Bakayo here, MSI. Now, front panel connector-wise, the Pro Max ticks all the right boxes, again, in terms of USB connectors, and most importantly, it does feature the Thunderbolt 4.0 card connector, which will up the upgradability value of this board. Cooling-wise, again, we're in the normal range with a bunch of fan connectors and an all-in-one water pump connector. Nothing fancy, but acceptable at that price range. And finally, troubleshooting-wise, we do have our usual easy debugger for a booting sequence pointer, but nothing much more to get you out of trouble. And as usual, I'll say that QR codes are not that expensive. You know, those little LED error codes, not expensive, lifesaver. I would really want to see manufacturers to start, you know, introducing them and implementing them in, in sub $300 motherboards. My two cents. Now, in conclusion, MSI's Pro Z790A Max Wi-Fi will cost you about $240 before taxes, which is significantly cheaper than its near identical previous Z790 iteration, which is very good news, but not very surprising since I did find the Pro Z790A, the original one, way overpriced and uh, what MSI is doing here is just relying on its competition pricing. But most importantly, the Pro Z790A Max marks a clear evolution between cheap, not really great for anything motherboards uh, MSI can produce and really awesome enthusiast driven platform that the MAG series can deliver. And in short, the, the Pro A Max Wi-Fi uh, bridges that performance gap very, very well. And it's been so hard in the past couple of years um, to find motherboards which were actually worth their price tag. And I'm not saying this one does, but it's really getting close. In short, it's a great mid-budget motherboard, slightly overpriced, and not as much as other models. So my price recommendation here is more around the $220 price point. I think that is actually the fair value of what you're buying. Not Again, not very far from the, its initially price tag, so that's very good. But other than that, it's a quality-driven, very well-engineered, performance-driven, and most importantly, robust motherboard, which easily uh, sits in my top five mid-budget boards that you should uh, uh, buy if you had five different builds, which makes no sense. It's in my top five, uh, if you were wondering, and definitely a must-buy. 